Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and in a previous lecture of guitar amplification and effects, I derived the transfer function of a standard first-order all-pass filter stage as used in phaser pedals. In this lecture, I'll plot some frequency responses for this using the open source tool Octave. Octave is basically a free rewrite of the very expensive MATLAB. This is a language my Georgia Tech students will be very familiar with. If you haven't used it before, I would strongly recommend downloading Octave and giving it a try. I think I used FN to represent the natural frequency, aka the corner frequency of one of the phase shift stages. And that's going to be something like, I don't know, let's try 100 hertz. You can try different numbers. And I'm going to use W to represent omega. So that 100 hertz in omega land is going to be 2 times pi times Fn. So that gives it in radians per second. And I want to make a plot for a bunch of frequencies. So how about let's go up to... 5 kilohertz just to have something. Actually, let me use Linspace for this. So I'm going to go from 0 to 5,000, and I don't know, let's how about have 400 points. All right, and we'll need to get that into radians per second. So let me write that as W equals 2 times pi times F. So omega there is like radians. And we plug in j omega for s in the Laplace domain transfer function. So j here represents that square root of minus 1. Now, one thing you have to be very careful is Octave or MATLAB will happily let you redefine this. Let's be careful not to do that. And so this will create a vector of frequency values. So I can evaluate a one-stage transfer function as something like, let's say, s minus omega n divided by s plus omega n. So that's my transfer function. And the period here that comes before the division sign indicates that this is an element-wise division. If you don't have the period here, it might try to do some weird matrix algebra kind of thing that we don't want. All right, so we can have a number of stages in sequence. So how about I'll write H mult as being something like H1 to the power of the number of stages. Let me use N for the number of stages. And again, if I just have the caret here, it might do some weird matrix algebra power thing, but this dot in front here indicates that it's an element-wise operation. And let's see, let's start with saying that we'll just have one phase shift stage. All right, so we can plot the absolute value of H1, and let's plot it against the actual frequency in hertz. And this should just give us a straight line. So I'll say phaser, and indeed it gives us a straight line of one because this is an all-pass filter, so it's passing all of the frequencies evenly. The most interesting thing here would be to plot the angle to actually look at the phase shift. So let's do that, and we see that the phase shift looks like this. And let's see what this looks like for two stages. Wait a minute, this isn't right. I need to plot H mult here. That was right for n equals 1, but it wouldn't be right for n equals 2 because if I was just plotting H1. All right, so if I put in two phase shift stages, I get that. And let's see if I put in three phase shift stages, I wind up with this. If I wind up with four phase shift stages, I get that. Let's see, actually, let me move it over here so it's easier to kind of change things around here. Actually, this is kind of a terrible setup. Uh, why don't I put it here? All right, there we go. All right, so here's five. All right, how about 100? Okay, that's getting kind of crazy. 
Notice the way this is spaced. It's probably nicer to look at this on a logarithmic scale. And actually, let me do this with that window. Let me change this to semi-log x. Ah, first of all, let me put this on something that's not completely ridiculous. So we'll let n equal 12. I think the Mogerfoger can do that. All right, and let me change this from 0 to 1 so we don't have anything weird about taking log of 0. And instead of figuring out the log space command, how about let's start at 10 hertz and jack up the number of points to get a better looking plot. All right, something like that. All right, now the phase shift itself is not terribly interesting. What we're really interested in is what we get when we take the original signal. So I'm going to call this H sum, and I'll represent the original signal as having a transfer function of one plus this phase shifted signal. So let's look at the absolute value of this H sum. That's what we're actually going to hear. Wait a minute, I just made the same mistake I did earlier. This should be H mult. All right. So let's take a look at that. Ah, here we go. Now we're cooking with gas. So here you see that there are some nulls, and here you see some peaks. And if we change the frequency, you'll see the frequencies of the nulls and the peak shifting around. Let's put that down at 50. There we go, something like that. That's kind of fun. Let's put this back. And let me actually jack up the number of points again to make an even better looking plot. There we go. I like that. Do you like that? I like that. All right. Let's see what happens if I don't have as many phase shift stages. So here's just one phase shift stage there. And well, that's very boring, isn't it? So let's do at least two stages. Okay. Now we have a dip. Here's three. And now I have four. All right. So it looks like you really want an even number of stages and that will give you half as many dips. So here's six stages, and here's eight stages. All right, so this is adding, what if we subtract? Ah, so then the nulls and the peaks flip around, I think. Let me try that again, going back to the addition. Yeah. All right, that's interesting. What if we don't add in quite so much? So here I'm adding in half as much. Ah, there we go. What if we just add in a little bit? Oh, this is actually a little bit misleading because it's scaling the plot vertically. So this is really just going from 0.9 to 0.1. If we were to fix the axes, this would actually be kind of a very small variation you would see. All right, so that was a little bit misleading. Let me go ahead and put this back as it was. If you wanted, you could actually plot the vertical axis on a log scale too, so we could do a log log plot. There we go. And I just think these kinds of plots don't look as much fun as these kinds of plots, but your mileage may vary. And just for fun, let's see what this looks like if we plot the horizontal axis on a linear scale. It looks something like that. The nulls on the left all bunch up. There you go. That looks nicer. Okay, let's play another game. I'm going to change HMALT here to HOL, which stands for H open loop because the game I'm going to play here is now to imagine we're putting some feedback around this network. So I'll write HCL, which is H closed loop, and I'll use Black's feedback formula and write HOL divided with that dot, so it's element-wise division, 1 minus beta times HOL. So beta is a feedback factor. So if beta is positive, that's positive feedback. And if beta is negative, that's negative feedback. And what we'll do is we'll take the result of this closed loop structure here and add that to the original signal and see what that looks like. 
So just as a sanity check, let me start with beta equals zero, and this should give me the same thing back, which it does. And how about let me change beta to 0 0.5. Ah, look at that. Makes it spikier, speakier, something like that. All right. Ooh, look at that. What happens if beta becomes one? It has a freak out. Then there's definitely odd stuff going on. Let's keep beta less than one. All right. So what about beta negative? So let's see if beta is negative. Oh, it kind of rounds it out a bit more. So here's the original zero. All right, so that's the original with no feedback. Now if I use negative feedback, and let's use some more negative feedback. Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Let's see what happens if you put in minus one. Oh, it does not like that. What if I put in minus two? Okay, I'm gonna imagine that something is probably weird going on there. So let's go back to restricting that to that range in here. And there we go. Let's try a little bit. And here's back to the original. Okay, so you could play all sorts of games with that and get all sorts of different interesting frequency shapes.